Welcome back to First Move. Now, we spend a lot of time discussing artificial intelligence. If you're a regular viewer, you will know that. We talk about its applications and some of the critiques. Now, AI in education has been, let's call it controversial in certain quarters. Some schools see it as a teaching aid, while others are banning it completely. One firm that wants teachers to embrace AI as an ally is Cypher Learning. The company uses AI to create personalized learning experiences for schools, individuals, and staff in the workplace. Its latest product is called Copilot, which allows educators to design and curate courses, tests, and games for students. Cypher says Copilot can do all of this in under 10 minutes and for less than $10 per course. The public school system in Qatar and Northwestern University already use Cypher to create coursework. Graham Glass is the founder and CEO of Cypher Learning, and he joins us now. Graham, fantastic to have you on the show. I also should admit to our viewers, I've seen this happen firsthand, and we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah. you come at this space as both um, an educator, but also a data and, and computer Greek geek. Um, so just explain the vision of Cypher Learning, first and foremost. Well, the vision of Cypher Learning is to transform the way that people teach and learn. And uh, for a lot of educators, they spend huge amounts of time involved in a lot of the drudgery of building the actual educational content. So we felt like AI offered an opportunity to re relieve a lot of that drudgery. And so as you mentioned, uh, the first version of our co-pilot does a pretty amazing job, actually, uh, of creating fantastic quality materials in just minutes. OK, so you've taken me down the AI route, so we're going to have to go there. When you and I met <laughs> yeah. in person, um, we discussed a lot of the capabilities and the impact of, of education on AI. Um, and our regular viewers will remember a subject that we talked about on the show a couple of weeks ago, which was a reticulated giraffe, um, yes. one without <laughs> spots. And so I, just to challenge you, I asked you to uh, provide me with a curriculum for learning everything I could about this um, reticulated giraffe, and you did it, and it took about what twelve minutes. Just talk yeah, us through that this. Yeah, that was. A, I have to say that was a somewhat whimsical choice of yours, Julia, but it was a great one. <laughs> I, I think what this illustrated, me. what this illustrated, <laughs> is that you can pick anything. It could mm. be particle physics. It could be, you know, how to deal with a difficult customer. It could be digital branding. Anything that you want, and click a couple of buttons, and ten minutes later, you've got a beautiful course on that subject. And as you showed. Reticulated giraffes um, was no problem at all. It produced uh, a plan, tests, an effective study guide. I mentioned it takes about 10 to 12 minutes. Do you have a sort of comparison of what that would have taken in the real world for a teacher to put together a plan like that? Let's assume it was a broader curriculum than that. But I mean, we're talking hours, aren't we? Weeks. Yeah, we, we actually did quite a lot of research when we were building Copilot. And um, generally speaking, it normally takes between four to six hundred hours to create a high quality engaging course. So that's, that's all time taken away from the teachers where they could be spending um, inspiring and motivating their students. So our feeling if we can shrink that four to six hundred hours down to ten minutes, and obviously you're going to do some personalization, that gives so much time back to the teacher to do what I think really teachers should be doing, which is inspiring their students. Now, my regular viewers, hopefully, because we talk a lot about this, will be going, hang on a second, what about accuracy? Where's the data yeah. coming from? Who's training the data that this AI system is using? Um, and who goes over this to make sure it's, it's factually correct? Over yeah, to that's you. A great, that, that, that's a great <laughs> question. I think that, that, first of all, there's more than one AI involved. So when Copilot works, there's at least three AIs working hard for you behind the scenes. Um, and that's soon going to become five or six AIs. But to answer your question about accuracy, AIs are trained on a massive amount of internet data. Um, so it, they essentially ingest you know, the vast percentage of human knowledge. They extract the essence, and that's what they build the courses from. And so the idea behind Copilot is that it doesn't replace the teachers. It does a huge amount of the, the, the burden of creating the course. But the teacher does still have the responsibility to review it for accuracy. That being said, though, one of the things that we'll shortly be releasing is something called AI Crosscheck, which takes the output from the first AI and then introduces it to, to two more AIs who then review the first AI for accuracy. So that will then additionally remove some burden from the teacher. Yeah, so it's just adding layers of protection. So if there is some kind exactly. of disagreement between the two AI systems, then it's flagged <laughs> automatically and they can check 
they can check it, it, that first. Exactly, and it will automatically flag that for the human reviewer. So the human is still in the loop, but the AI is kind of scrubbing the first set of data so that you know, the burden on you, the teacher, gets greatly reduced. What's the cost of this? Like if you were talking to a school that could potentially use this, and we'll talk about scaling in a second, but what's the cost? Because yeah. I mentioned the $10, but it sort of sounds a bit jarring to me. Yeah, well, funnily enough, the average price is actually more like $5. So the $10 is actually probably twice what you'd normally pay. So yeah, you're, you're taking what typically costs between eleven dollars to $15,000 and reducing that down to about $5. I'm sort of stunned into silence. I can understand why um, sort of a whole nation like Qatar is saying to you, okay, we can use this in some way to sort of redevelop what is a traditionally archaic education system, I think, in many places where you look around the world. How do you even go about doing that on a much larger scale? Well, I think, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm on the show. I'm trying to get the, the good news out to the uh, education community that AI really does have the potential to transform the way that people teach and learn, and it will it re relieve a lot of the drudgery that's typically involved. So part of it is evangelism. Um, a lot of it is showing people what great looks like. You know, that's why I, I was really happy that you showed here's what a course looks like after it's built, because when people experience the AI, their jaw normally drops and they're like, wow, I had no idea that AI was <laughs> capable about that. And, and believe me, this is scratching the surface of what AI is going to do. But do you, do you also have some teaching response, which is, oh, my goodness, this is going to sort of do me out of a job. And as you well know, part of the other response to this has been, hang on a second, it's going to be used as a tool for cheating for students. Um, how do you get around those two issues? Because you're right in the heart of it. Yeah, well, you know, in my background, I used to teach computer science at the University of Texas at Dallas. So I know exactly what it's like to be a teacher or a professor. And personally, I would have embraced this if it had been available when I was teaching. So I would have taken the course that I spent hundreds of hours building I would have built an initial version in about 10 minutes. I would have personalized it so when I walk into the classroom, I have so much more time left over to motivate and inspire my students. So I don't view this as a threat in the slightest of the teaching community. Well, I look at it more like using AI gives them back so much time to do what hopefully they, they love doing. Yeah, although there will be people watching this going, hang on a second, you are the CEO of this company, so that we would expect you to say that. Um, <laughs> you know, I have greater yeah. faith, I have to admit, in the private sector quite often rather than the government sector for big transformations like our education system, which I think many of us agree needs to be done. How do you scale this? I feel like you almost need a conversation with hardware, uh, Apple, Dell, for example. Um, and, and finding out how we sort of in, introduce this and use this on a far wider scale in schools and the workplace beyond. Graham, here's your moment. If yeah. uh, the CEOs of those um, <laughs> companies are listening, Thank what would you, you say Julie. to them? You, there you go. You yes. teed that up awesomely for me. So yeah, we have very big visions about how AI can really improve the way that uh, students learn, the way that teachers teach. And we are working on some amazing technology that goes way beyond what you showed in your show today. So we would love to team up with people like Richard Branson, Michael Dell, Carlos Slim, um, Steve Jobs Foundation, anyone who's listening there, uh, we would love to team up with you to bring this technology to hundreds of millions of kids. Yeah, I, um, that's what it needs. Graham, it's just the beginning of our conversation. We'll work on that. And if those guys were listening, um, we'll pass on your details. Graham oh, yes. Glass. Thank you so Bye. much, Julia. Thank you. We'll talk again. Founder and CEO of Cypher Learning. Thank you. Bye. Okay.